Hey guys, welcome back to the HVAC Standard. Today I want to talk to you about capacitors. Have you ever had to talk about a capacitor before? Ah, if you've never had a service call, probably not. It just usually doesn't come up in most normal conversations. For me it does, but that's also because I'm in the heating and air world. Now, as far as your capacitor, if you're having a conversation with somebody about it, chances are you've got a service tech out at your house and either they're doing a maintenance and they say, hey, your capacitor is not reading what it should be. We should replace it because otherwise it could inhibit your air conditioner from cooling. Or it's a hot day and your hot air house is hot inside because your air conditioner is not working and the capacitor went out altogether. So when we're talking about capacitors, first off, we're not talking about the flux capacitor that gets... Uh, put into the DeLorean to get docked back to the future. It's not that kind of capacitor whatsoever. And I did realize a while back, I always use that joke, and apparently I'm getting a little dated because there are some young people out there that don't understand that reference. So, I, I don't know. I'm getting old. It's what it is. So, in order to get docked back to the future, you do have to have a good flux capacitor. In order to get your air conditioner for your home to work, you also have to have a good capacitor. Now, these capacitors, first, what is it? What does it do? It's this little silver thing that sits in there. And, uh, you know, it just, it's magic. You know, that's what I try to tell people, but sometimes people want a better answer than it's just magic. So, the easiest way I explain this, now you can get on Webster's Dictionary, you can go out there and find the exact terminology and all that kind of stuff. You guys know that I don't really do that much. So, basically that capacitor, it gives that those motors in that air conditioner a little extra burst of energy whenever it goes to start. It helps those motors get going, and then once they're going, it keeps it running right along. So, Basically, it gives it an extra little jolt. So that capacitor, there's different kinds. There's dual capacitors, and then there's uh, run capacitors. Now, technically, a dual capacitor, the way I explain it to everybody, is a dual capacitor is basically two run capacitors put into one. They share the same common wire. I'm not going to get too in, into uh, specifics or uh, some of the, the technical side of that, but basically that is two capacitors in one. Um, a lot of these air conditioners out there these days, not all, but a good majority of them have dual capacitors in them. Um, until you get into like ECM motors of different styles, uh, a lot of the ECMs don't take a capacitor like this. Um, but in a dual capacitor, typically, uh, there is one side of it is for your compressor, the other side is for your condenser fan motor. Um, the capacitor is found in the outside unit that's sitting outside your house, um, and without it, those motors a lot of times cannot start. So, symptoms of a failing capacitor, for one, you don't have any air conditioning. Yeah, that one's pretty obvious. Two, your compressor sounds like it's having a really hard time to start. Now, there are some compressors out there that also need uh, um, start capacitors. Uh, start capacitors come with a potential relay. They are a little bit different than these run and dual capacitors. Um, but the other thing is, if you have a run capacitor that's starting to fail, a lot of times it's very hard for that compressor to roll over and get started and going. So if you hear weird groans and grunts coming from that air conditioner every time it comes on, it may be time to call somebody and have them take a look at it. Um, you know, there, it may need some attention, which technically, if you're doing maintenance every year, like you're supposed to on that air conditioner, your service tech should be checking that capacitor and make sure that it is still up to par. Because these capacitors, they do all have readings on them. Like this one here in my hand, this happens to be a 45 plus 5 dual capacitor. That means the compressor side is a 45 microfarad and the condenser fan side is a 5 microfarad. Uh, so that's what helps get those motors going and started, like I said before. Now, the other thing is when they go to replace a capacitor, it needs to be the exact same size. Don't go around messing around trying to, you know, oh, I'm going to put a bigger one in it and the motor's going to do better. That's not how that works. It changes your amp draw and everything else. It's very hard on the motors, so go back with the exact same size as what was there. The other thing is uh, these capacitors, um, some of them are 370 volt capacitors and some of them are 440 volt capacitors. Uh, most of them these days, not all, but a good majority of them, a lot of them, they are 440 slash 370, which they can operate either voltage. Um, if it is a 370 volt, um, I'm sorry, if it is a 440 volt uh, capacitor that's on there, do not put a 370 volt in it. It's just not going to be very healthy on that motor. If it is a 370 and you put a 440 on it, you can get away with it by going up a little bit. I don't typically recommend it, but you know you can get by. Um, I'm big on going back with what OEM standard is um, and going back with what that unit was manufactured for. Um, I like to think that I can fix air conditioners, but I also like to think that the people that design these things know a little bit more than I do. So um, I try to go back with what was there originally, no matter what, and that's in any aspect um, of HVAC, go back with what was there originally. So these capacitors, like I said, give it a little extra jolt. Now one secret that I want to tell you guys 
because um, I did promise one secret in this video. Um, capac capacitors is fairly universal as far as how they're designed and how they're made, because um, a lot of times um, on here, there's little stamped, I don't know if you can see that, but there's little stamped things. Um, on one terminal, uh, it says fan, which obviously that is for your condenser fan motor. Uh, one side, I feel it right. One side says uh, C, which is for common, uh, which that com that terminal is common to both uh, the other two terminals on there. And then you have HERM. HERM stands for hermetic or hermetically sealed compressor is what it's for. So that is for your compressor. Now, the downside is, now this one is a nice, shiny, good-looking one. They don't always look like this uh, years down the road. Um, some of the old ones, a lot of times they would start to rust um, and uh, they'd get dirty, whatever, um, and you couldn't read those terminals anymore. Um, there were there for a little while. There was a couple brands out there that uh, apparently had some engineers in the place that weren't thinking very well, at least not long-term wise, um, and they put little stickers on there. Um, you couldn't read those damn things later, so it made it really hard. But, like I said, there is one universal secret that you can usually use for identifying these terminals. Like I said, there's always a common terminal on a dual uh, capacitor, right? The, if you look at these little spades that are on there, on top, the common always has four terminals. Almost, I actually, I think 100% of the dual capacitors out there, at least in the res residential HVAC world, the terminal, the the one that has four terminals on it, that is always your common. The one that has three terminals on it, that one's always And you know what? That leaves the one that only has one terminal on it, that is your condenser fan motor. So that is your secret for the day if you cannot read those terminals for some reason. Um, that is pretty much universal for all of them. So if you are a tech out there and you can't figure out which one it is, that's a good way to always know which one's which. So if you have any questions about capacitors or anything like that, hit me up in the comments. I love talking to you guys. Um, so if you have anything at all, let me know. Otherwise, uh, if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up and share with your friends because sharing is caring. And it's just the right damn thing to do. And uh, while you're at it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because I love seeing the, all the subscribers out there. So anything, let me know. Thank you and God bless.